Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I am your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Altman Health Systems. Today, Brad and I are broadcasting from our administrative offices, and our special guest is Tricia Witz, Sales Supervisor from Primetime Health Plan. Good morning, Tricia, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. If you are 65 years or older, you have probably been receiving lots of calls, letters, and emails regarding Medicare open enrollment, and the period runs from October 15th through December 7th. What you may not know is nationally, <clears throat> roughly 70% of Medicare patients do not review their plan during open enrollment periods. That can be kind of scary and leave opportunities to discover unwelcome or unwanted changes in coverage when they visit a doctor, pharmacy, yeah. or other provider in a new plan year. Another fun fact is that Medicare Advantage plans have become the way that most Medicare patients receive their Medicare benefits. Around 50% of Medicare beneficiaries choose to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. Advantage plans become popular because most of the benefits are not covered by traditional Medicare. This morning, we're fortunate to talk with Trisha Witz from our local five-star Advantage plan, Primetime Health Plan. Primetime is locally owned, and when you call, you're going to be talking to someone right here in your backyard who understands Medicare benefits and options. We'd like to remind our listener also that this program will be available on our podcast. Just look for Medicine Center Pharmacy in your favorite podcast app, and please subscribe. So, Tricia, please tell your listeners a little bit about yourself. Certainly. As mentioned, my name is Trisha Witz, and I have worked with Primetime Health Plan for the last 25 years. Oh. I started, yeah, <laughs> I started okay. in the service okay. center, and I am currently serving as a sales and education supervisor. Um, being born here uh, and raised right here in the community, I feel like Alt Care Primetime Health Plan is my my second home. I am very proud to work for this organization and solely because they are still striving to provide personalized customer service to our local community. And I find that to be uh, important. And that just brings me to one of the favorite aspects of my job is just being able to sit down with people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, exploring their Medicare options, hopefully equipping them well enough to go out on their own uh, with confidence and make their, their choices wisely. So during this time of the year, we hear a lot about AEP, what, and that's not the electric company. What is, <laughs> a, what is a, AEP when it comes to Medicare plans? Yeah, so AEP is the acronym for an annual election period. And that is the time frame where Medicare recipients have the opportunity to make changes to their Medicare Advantage plan as well as their prescription Part D plan. That time frame runs from October 15th through December 7th of every year, and those changes take effect January 1st. Hmm. So what type of changes do beneficiaries make during AEP? They have the ability to leave their Medicare Advantage plan to go with a different carrier. They may change plans within the same carrier. Um, we do... I, you know, just like in the introduction, you mentioned hmm. how over 70% of Medicare recipients are not looking at their plan changes, and it's very important to do so, um, so they can make sure that their plan is still working for them for the upcoming year. Okay. All right. Well, what happens if someone misses the annual election period? That's a good question. So Medicare does allow another opportunity to make a change, and that is through the open enrollment period, which begins January 1st, ending March 31st. And during this time frame, someone who's on Medicare Advantage can change again to a different carrier or within the same carrier. Uh, they have the ability to go back to original Medicare and pick up a prescription Part D. And for those that are on a Medicare supplement plan, if they miss this deadline, um, they would be able to join a Medicare Advantage plan only if that plan had a five-star rating because that five-star rating allows for them to accept open enrollment through the year, which primetime is a five-star rated plan, as you mentioned, for 2024. Um, beyond that, they would just have to wait until the next AEP. 
Okay, so what if I'm happy with my current coverage? Do I need to change anything? No, actually, if you're happy with your current coverage, you do not need to make any changes at all. The only time you would need to do that is if the carrier would send you a letter um, stating that they're terming your plan for uh, some reason. And then they usually give you a little bit longer of a time frame to make that change. Okay, in the spirit of trust but verify, why would it be a really good idea to review your plan options, even if you are happy with the current plan you have? So uh, Medicare Advantage plans and prescription drug plans, they make changes every year. Uh, for example, they may change their premiums, the co-pays can change deductibles, um, dental, vision, increase, decrease dollar amounts, sometimes physicians change. And, you know, just as the plan is changing, it seems like it's constantly evolving, uh, your health changes as well. So you might have had a good health year the year before, and then this year, maybe not so much. So you really want to, again, make sure that the plan that you're currently utilizing is going to continue to be the best option for you. Trish, I know there are different types of Medicare plans out there. Can you explain the difference between a Medicare supplement plan and versus a Medicare Advantage plan? Yes, absolutely. So this is my favorite part of my job, actually. And <laughs> <laughs> the reason for that is because by time, um, many times, by the time someone gets to me, they have a stack of mail and they're utterly confused about what their options are. So this is um, a joy for me. Hmm. So outside of having Medicare information, which comes from CMS, which is the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, they're really only getting three items. And I feel like if they would grasp what these three items are, it would make their decision process that much easier. So when it comes to the three items, and I like to separate them out by option one and option two, hopefully to clarify um, how it works. Supplemental plans, um, that's one item that you receive, and they're identified by letters A through N. So if you have three different books open on the table, and they are all lettered A through N, that's going to be a clue that that's a supplemental plan. And that's going to pay secondary to your Medicare. Depending on the plan that you choose will depend on the coverage that you have. So plan G is in George. That plan is going to be the same amongst carriers. What's going to be different is how much they charge for premium because there's different basis as to what, you know, how they do that. Um, I talk about plan G specifically because it is the most utilized supplemental plan out there. But when it comes to plan G, on average for someone who is 65 in the local area, that plan is about $131 a month. And that's going to be in addition to their Medicare Part B, because the Medicare Part B, they will continue to pay regardless of any plan option that they choose. Hmm. So additionally, um, when they go to the hospital, there's no Part A deductible or anything, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, however, that's covered at 100% with Medicare and Plan G. Hmm. What Plan G does have is a Part B deductible. And Part B services are outpatient services, such as doctor office visits, emergency room, lab work. Mm -hmm. So for 2024, that deductible is going to be $240. And once that deductible is met, then the supplemental plan comes in and starts picking up the remainder of the claims. As mm -hmm. we're under original Medicare, you typically have that deductible for Part B services but then the consumer is also responsible for 20% of the claims. So Plan G picks that up. What's nice about the supplemental plans, more often than not, they are um, open network, which means that you can use any doctor, any hospital within the United States as long as they accept Medicare, which most do. Hmm. Now, what you may find <clears throat> is like a select plan, and a select plan limits you to a network. So... Um, just kind of keep an eye out for the word select. So that is one item. So under option one, I like to call it, in that instance, you have Medicare Part A and B, 
And then you have your supplemental card and you show both to the doctor and the hospital. And then because neither of those cover your prescription drugs, you would need the second item that you receive in the mail, which is a prescription Part D plan. And uh, the prescription Part D plans provide solely medications. And they range anywhere from $7 a month on up. Um, so they, there's plenty of plans to choose from. But under option one, that would complete your health care needs with Medicare Part A and B, supplemental policy, and prescription Part D. As opposed to option two, which is the third item that you're receiving in the mail. And if you're opening these booklets and you see that they have lower monthly premiums, and they have co-payments to the doctors and to the hospitals, and the majority of the plans include the prescription drugs, then you're gonna know that's one-stop shopping, Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, the way that works is those plans are contracted <laughs> with Medicare, and they have to be approved on an annual basis. Uh, so each Medicare Advantage plan, they have to go through that contract renewal annually. Um, <laughs> And, you know, sometimes people think, well, if I have a Medicare Advantage, then I lose my Medicare. And you actually don't. What's happening is Medicare is behind the scenes, subsidizing that Advantage plan on your behalf. And uh, that's how the Advantage plans are able to offer $0 monthly premiums. They have mm. extra benefits that Medicare doesn't cover. Um, but most often, there is a network that they need to stay within. So there are some differences between the two. Um, but again, I like to separate it out, option one, option two, understanding that there's really only three separate things they're receiving, just kind of knowing what those are. Okay, Tricia, our first break is here. Uh, you are listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, friends. Just a reminder to stop by the pharmacy and talk to our pharmacist about our Health Matters Drug Savings Plan. We want to help you stay well and save money. So, um, Tricia, what is the benefit of having an Advantage plan over original Medicare A and B? So there are several benefits um, when it comes to having a Medicare Advantage plan over original Medicare. Uh, as previously mentioned, because of the subsidy, many of those plans have no additional cost, and yet they get all kinds of different benefits that you don't have, such as um, gym memberships through participating facilities. Sometimes there's meal delivery after an inpatient or observation stay, um, dental, vision, hearing, um, over-the-counter items, and um, the max out-of-pocket is one of the things that's most important. Just because on original Medicare, as mentioned, we talked about inpatient hospital deductibles as well as outpatient deductibles and coinsurances. And there's no limit as to what you'll pay for those services. As we're on a Medicare Advantage plan, as you're reviewing those benefits and making those choices, they have upfront a max out of pocket that you know automatically if something catastrophic happened, how many co-pays or how much um, you could pay out of pocket in co-payments for the year. And they keep track of that. And if for some reason you met that figure within the year, then you would be covered at 100% for the remainder of the year. Hmm. So what is the disadvantage of having MA over original Medicare and A and B? So this is all about perception, uh, whether or not there's a disadvantage. And the only thing I could really think about is the fact that you have to stay within a network of doctors and hospitals where original Medicare A and B, you have that flexibility of utilizing doctors within the United States. Um, there's so many different options, like Primetime, for instance, we have an extensive network. Uh, not only do we have Altman, uh, we have Cleveland Clinic, all of its facilities, as well as university hospital systems. So plenty to choose from. Okay. I'm on company insurance, but I happen to be over 65 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, my understanding is, is that part A kicks in on everybody over 65. Is, is that correct or, or not? 
So if you're receiving a social security check, you will automatically be enrolled into Medicare Part A and B. And if you have company insurance, whether it's through you or a spouse, and there's over 20 employees, you can sign that Medicare card and send it back, letting them know that you're opting out of Part B until a later date without penalty and keep your Part A. But the key is that 20 employee mark, because according to the Medicare secondary payer law, um, the group plan would be primary and then the Medicare Part A would be secondary. Well, I happen to be getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 phone calls a day uh, about signing up for Medicare. Uh, <laughs> starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, ends at 9 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, where'd they get my number, my <laughs> phone number? <laughs> well, there is a national call list, and you can try to um, contact them to take yourself off of it, just like a mailing list. I see. Well, I've told every one of them that called me, please don't call again. Uh, I have home, I have health, my own insurance, da, 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 mm -hmm. but they don't listen. Yeah. And technically <laughs> they really shouldn't be calling you. Um, that's yeah. a conversation we have quite often here. Um, unless you're reaching out and asking to be called, they shouldn't be calling you. I, I think I'm getting phone calls from the moon too, maybe Mars. I mean, that's, that's, a, that is really how extensive the calls are. I can't believe it. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. One right after the other. So, yes. <laughs> anyway, it's fun, I guess. Along with election time. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah. Vote for me. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Tricia, what do we do if we really are, um, we really have a provider that we, we think a lot about and have a high regard for but they're not in network for an Advantage plan. So the way I would advise someone to do uh, or start researching is I would contact that physician's office. It's truly important to keep that physician um, and just ask the office manager, what plans do you accept? And that way you have the carrier's names and then you can start there by going through the options that are available. Um, but if it's, if it's something that you want to um, go away from and choose a new doctor, you can always do that. Um, and keep in mind, there are different types of, of Advantage plans. There are HMOs, which are health maintenance organizations, and those ones do require you to stay within the network, um, utilizing the doctor or hospital, getting approvals if you're going to go outside the network. As where there is a preferred provider organization as well. And what that means is that you have in-network providers that you can utilize. It's going to be more cost-effective for you to do so. But you have the out-of-network option as well, where the approvals are not required. Um, but you can visit your physician, just pay a little bit more to do so. Um, but if it's truly a physician that you want to stay with, I would contact their office and start that way with which plans they offer or which plans they accept, I should say. Okay. Well, in the spirit of also looking at your plan coverage, um, what if you go on vacation and you go to another state or how, how would that work based on the plan you choose? Mm -hmm. So with Medicare Advantage plans, specifically primetime health plan, you have the ability to be outside of the area up to six months consecutively and still be covered for urgent and emergency care. And that's worldwide. You just have your copays that apply. Uh, it would be no different if there was something that you needed to be admitted for to, you know, sustain your life or an emergency surgery. It would be covered as a network. And you just said worldwide. I did not know that. So mm -hmm. that's I'm glad you mentioned that. So that's very interesting. OK. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, OK. So you've touched on in network, out of network. Um, what if I go into the hospital while I'm out of network? I'm guessing I'll be covered, but there could be a, a cost sharing difference. Is that the simple way of looking at it? Well, the cost sharing should be as though it's in network because we're, you know, if it's something that's sustaining your life or an emergency surgery that can't wait, you're going to be covered as though you're in network. So you're going to pay the copays that apply to your plan. Okay. Okay. What's not covered is if you are, uh, let's say you're a snowbird and you're in Florida for four months out of the year and you start establishing physicians there, you start having elective surgeries there, um, the HMO is not going to work for you, okay, hmm. because it's not going to be something that's covered. 
All right, not to put you on the spot, but you, I had a thought. So I know someone who recently had an accident and broke their leg. So if is that considering considered a life sustaining thing, or is that going to be different than a heart attack or or something like that? Is that a fair question? That's a fair question, and that's something you definitely need to go to the emergency room for, which would be covered at the emergency room copay. Okay, very good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... What if I join advantage, join an advantage plan and don't like it? Am I stuck in this this, this, this co- coverage forever? <laughs> forever is a long time. So uh, yeah, I I know. <laughs> um, no. So again, every year you have the opportunity to make changes. October fifteenth through December seventh is that time frame. Um, the open enrollment period from January first to March thirty first. Uh, as well as when it's pertaining to a Medicare Advantage plan, if you if there's a five star election for that plan specifically, you can make changes. Now, I will touch on the supplemental. Uh, if you are enrolled into a supplemental plan, and that you wanted to try a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, and you join that plan, and within the year you decide that plan's not right for you, you want to go back to the supplemental plan. You can do that. It's called a 12 month look back where they'll accept you back into that, you know, supplemental plan. However, if you stay with the Medicare Advantage plan, let's say it's three years, and then you decide that you want to look at a supplemental plan at that time, um, the time to do that would be typically the annual election period. And Hmm. at that time, the supplemental plan will ask you medical questions and they may deny you. As where the advantage plan, the only things that they look at for enrollment would be Medicare Part A and B eligibility, as well as the service area in which they're approved for as long as you're living there. Okay, so um, much easier to be enrolled into an advantage plan at certain times. Wow, okay. Complicated or what? (laughs) <laughs> just a little all right okay it's the bottom of the hour time for the news thanks for joining us this morning on health matters with the medicine center pharmacy you're listening to health matters with the medicine center pharmacy i'm your host and pharmacist paul white this morning we're talking with trisha witz from primetime health plan are we back brad we are back okay so trisha when it comes to prescription Part D, what is it exactly? So for prescription Part D, it's a standalone sometimes program strictly for medications. Um, It is included into the Medicare Advantage plans also. And uh, the standalone portion of it would be utilized by someone who has Medicare Part A and B uh, by itself or someone who has Medicare Part A and B and a supplemental plan. Um, It's not something that is mandated. It's an optional program to enroll into to help with medication costs, but we do try to encourage those that are coming on to Medicare to take a Part D plan uh, simply because, as we've already discussed, there's limited times to enroll, and if something happens mid-year and now all of a sudden you're on medications, those costs will come directly out of the consumer's pocket rather than having help with a, a Part D plan. Um, additionally, there's a penalty if they decide to sign up later. Uh, Medicare will implement a penalty for all the months that they were not enrolled into a Part D plan. So hmm. we just try to encourage everyone to be participating in one in one way or another. So I, did I catch that? Okay. I'm pretty far over 65. Okay. All right. Tomorrow, what if I decide to go on Medicare? You, do you, did you just say I got a penalty or did I not get that right? There you, yes, you got that right, except for there are some exceptions. See, and that's why it's, it's a good thing to have a conversation with someone uh, when you are turning 65, because in the very beginning, Paul, you asked me about having employer coverage. Uh, so as long as you're still working and you have drug coverage, that's creditable to a prescription Part D plan, and you will test to that whenever you opt out of that plan or you decide to retire um, or that plan terms for some reason, and there will be no penalty for you. And it also doesn't apply for those who have the Veterans Administration. They're not subject to the penalty either. 
Interesting. Okay. What's it does? What does it mean to find your medication on a formulary? I know most uh, Medicare programs have a formulary, correct? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. So a formulary is just a list of medications. And for prime time specifically, we have five tiers. And typically, tiers one and tier two are going to be mostly generics. And tiers three, four, and five are brand names. Most often, five being a specialty tier. Um, and what that list allows for a consumer to look at is, is their medication number one covered? And two, how will it be covered? What tier is it under and what co-pays are associated with that? All right. So here's a loaded question for you. Are all drug <laughs> tiers the same and regardless of what insurance you have? No, they're not the same. And that is a loaded question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so Part D plans have to follow Medicare guidelines and uh, they have to cover at least the same way as Medicare expects, if not better. Okay. But one, and one example of that is each carrier has to uh, provide at least two drugs in a classification. So I'll give an example. If you're taking an acid reflux medication, one carrier may cover protonics and omeprazole, while the other one may cover Prilosec and Nexium. Okay, so they are the two, or they're in the same classification, but they don't have to be the same drug, one. And two, they don't even have to tier them the same. So one carrier might cover lisinopril at a tier one at a $0 copay, as where another carrier may have lisinopril at a tier two, and maybe you're paying $6 for it. So no, they're not all the same. Okay. Another term we hear a lot of in the pharmacy, and we're coming into the time of the year where it's probably hitting some patients, the famous donut hole. <laughs> Can you talk about what the donut hole is and when it comes to Medicare Part D and who may or may not be subject to that clause. Okay. So the donut hole is a relative to the prescription drug coverage. And um, the other term for that is coverage gap. So they're interchangeable. And not everyone will go into that donut hole. Uh, when it comes to the Medicare prescription Part D, there are four phases. There is a deductible phase and there is an initial coverage phase, which typically means that's where the consumers are paying their co-payments, if there are any, related to the tiers and medications that they're on. And during this phase, the carrier or the pharmacy is tracking how much the carrier is paying for that medication as well as the consumer together. So it's actual retail cost. If that actual retail cost for that consumer reaches $5,030 in 2024, then they go into what is called the donut hole or the coverage gap. Typically, what you'll find mm. here is the copays that you're paying in the previous phase now are 25%. You're paying 25% towards a max out of pocket. Um, next year, it will be $8,000. Now, there are some you know different things to that in the sense of manufacturing discounts that are applying that you don't see that are behind the scenes. Mm helping consumers get through that quicker. And then the last portion would be catastrophic phase where they're back to paying $0 for medications um, for 2024. So it's not mm. cut and dry. Um, again, if somebody uh, would sit down with a Medicare educator, I said a Medicare specialist, I guess the best thing would do it be to have the medication costs that they typically um, incur through the year. So that way they can help them to say, you know, are you going to reach that $5,030? If you are, when will it be? So they know what to expect uh, for each month that they receive a medication, they should receive an explanation of benefits telling them where they are during this phase. Um, so they can be apprised as to what the cost may be in the future. Okay, so how about this? Can I choose a Medicare plan for my drug coverage that doesn't have the coverage gap or donut hole? 
you know, if they were available, you could choose that, uh, but there typically isn't anything available uh, covering, you know, completely during the coverage gap or supplementing yeah. that. I will say prime time specifically, we do cover the tier one and tier two medications the same way all year, uh, but they do require our members to pay the 25% for brand name and specialty tier through the coverage gap. Interesting. Our final break is here, Tricia. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I am your pharmacist, Paul White. Pharmacist Brad White, and I thank you for joining us. Let's get back to the last segment of the show. So, Tricia, um, can you give me some examples of coverage on original Medicare versus primetime health plan HMO-POS? Yes, absolutely. So originally we talked about Medicare and how there are some deductibles and coinsurances involved. Um, for instance, if someone were on original Medicare and they were admitted into the hospital for 2024, whether it's one day up to 60, uh, they have a $1,632 deductible. If they are in the hospital between days 60, 61 through 90, they would then be responsible for $408 per day in a copay. And then mm -hmm. the lifetime reserve days are 91 to 150. They then would be responsible for $816 per day. And um, primetime health plan, our $0 ultimate plan, for instance, the member would have a copay for the first three days or six days, I'm sorry, but after the six days, it's covered at 100%. And that copay would be $310 a day. Um, so if they're in for one day, it's $310 versus the $1632. And keep in mind that our max out of pocket on that plan alone is $4,300. So on original Medicare, you don't have that max out of pocket that you're working towards. Um, some examples for Part B, as mentioned previously, that there is a $240 deductible for 2024 on original Medicare, and then Medicare would come in and start picking up 80% of the claims after that's met, leaving the consumer responsible for 20%. As where the Part B services on prime time, for example, uh, doctor's office visits can be $5, it could be $40 for a specialist. Um, they may have $5 for lab work. And again, all of these copays are applying towards the max out of pocket keeping track. And mm -hmm. um, there's additional benefits that Primetime has that, you know, original Medicare doesn't have, um, such as over the counter items. And um, those over-the-counter items, we have up to $300 a year where they can purchase vitamins and uh, even toothpaste and Q-tips and canes and things like that. Um, when it comes to dental, we give $600 towards dental on our $0 plan, and they are allowed to use any dentist that they'd like to use. Um, so that makes it easy for them. Um, $0 eye exam. $300 eyewear allowance, as where Medicare doesn't cover those items either. We even have meal delivery uh, after an inpatient stay or observation stay, up to 10 meals. Mm. And then Papa Pals is a companion service that we offer up to 40 hours for someone to be able to have someone come in and do some light household duties, or if they need a ride to a physician's office or an appointment, that's what that's there for. Hmm. Wow. Um, okay. Um, what would be a reason that one would switch from Medicare supplemental to Medicare Advantage plan? Did we so, already cover this sort of? <laughs> well, it not. I mean, why someone comes in my office, typically what I see is they're thinking in their mind, why am I paying such a high premium? Because in that example I gave earlier, you're paying your Medicare Part B plus you're paying your supplemental plan premium, which I gave that example of $131. Mm -hmm. 
Additionally, you're paying a Part D premium, okay? Um, so they come in and they say, why am I paying all of these whenever I could have maybe a $0 program that includes the dental, the vision, the over-the-counter, um, things that are not covered on a supplemental plan? Typically, the only additional benefit that a supplemental plan covers would be a gym membership through Silver Sneakers or Silver and Fit, which is also included on the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, so it's about perception. You know, some people are tried and true with that supplemental because of the fact that they can use any doctor, any hospital. And some of them like to pay the higher premiums because they don't have the co-pays that you do that are, you know, with the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, mm. It's really just perception and what they're comfortable with. But those are some reasons we see why someone would change. Yes. All right. So how can, <clears throat> excuse me, how can I or our listeners today get more information about primetime health plans and the plans that primetime has to offer? So we are so easily accessible. <laughs> we have walk-in offices at 2600 6th Street, where we're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 430. Um, you can go to our website, www.pthp.com and request a brochure. Um, you can call in and talk to the service center. They're open through March now, eight, um, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, we have in-person meetings within Stark County Homes, Tuscross, and Wayne that they can attend. And we also have webinars that are available. Yes. Well, that's a lot of flexibility. Is Now, how about for signing up? Is it, do you have to come to your office to sign up or are there other methods? No, there are other methods. They can go online to www.pthp and they can enroll right there and they get a confirmation uh, number, letting them know that it was successful. They can go to medicare.gov and enroll through their online enrollment center. Um, if they call and ask for a brochure, there's an application in there with a self-addressed envelope. They can mail it back or they can drop it off. Uh, we have many agents and brokers who work within our community as well, and they sell prime time on our behalf. So, <clears throat> Tricia, please tell our listeners how to get in touch with Prime Time Health Plan. So, our local number would be 330-363-7407. Toll free is one 800 577 5084 and TTY users can call 711. Okay. Okay. Good. You know, what we hear from so many uh, individuals on Medicare, whatever their program is, is, is that the whole situation is so uh, confusing that they're afraid to change mm -hmm. um, because they're sort of okay with what they got or mega okay with what they got. Mm -hmm. How do we, how do we change that? I mean, it just, I, I understand that, that uh, I understand that senior citizens, it's confusing. Um, and uh, anyway, go ahead. I think lack of fear causes, um, or I mean, lack of understanding causes fear. Okay. So any, and that's in any situation, in my opinion. So I think if they just um, would reach out and gain a great understanding of how their plan works and making sure that their questions that they have are answered, um, you know, rather than being bombarded with all the phone calls and accepting those, because I think those are confusing. I would encourage them to contact their carrier specific, or if there's one that they're interested in, sit down with someone and have that conversation uh, to gain that understanding and give them more comfort and understand that they can make changes. Um, there's no, nothing that's concrete where you're stuck in it, as you mentioned, forever. Um, they have that ability to go back if for some reason it just doesn't work out. Hmm. You know, I would, I would offer too, just from what we, we get questions in the pharmacy, as I'm sure you're aware. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing if your drug list, I mean, just talking medications, if your drug list doesn't change, you know, you can always double check what drugs your plan covers, but you know what, what if God forbid you have a turn in your health next year and you get put on a new medication? 
um, it, it might be an idea to make sure that you're actively seeing your primary care physician and you're making sure that you're not skipping physicals because you know, any change in health condition could drastically change your best choice for your plan. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is ask questions. So yes. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's just lack of understanding. It's just, you know, it is, it is just so, I don't know, Medicare used to be simple, didn't it? I don't remember it. <laughs> you know, when, when I believe it was the younger president, George Bush, that brought the Part D plan into play. Am I, am I right there? I was in 2006 when Part D came about. Yeah. And I'm thinking along with that, that some things came that are really bad for us, and that's the DIR fees. And uh, it just makes <laughs> some prescriptions when we fell and we were losing $150 on a script. So it just because the DIR fees, and I guess going, I don't get it at all. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, previous or you know, prior to 2006, there was no help with medication cost. Um, yeah. And the expense to the consumer was really high in some situations. So I think overall, it's been a benefit. Um, however, you know, it is confusing. Um, and I think they wanted to have options. You know, it, it does make it hard, though, because when you're working and you have insurance through the employer, you take what they give you. You have a couple mm -hmm. options, maybe, but they're being bombarded with so much information. And when you're mm -hmm. working and you go from that to retirement and you have your company saying these are the plan options, choose one, and it's maybe three to choose from versus getting stacks and stacks of mail, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting analogy because it is, I mean, I'm staggered at how many plans are available in Stark County alone. I mean, it is. So that's really an interesting analogy. Hmm. Well, the, you know, what's happened since the sixties also is that we've got a lot of new drugs that are very, very expensive, mm -hmm. which has really driven the dollar, uh, you know, amount for part D, whatever, whatever. And some of the, some of the newer ones are really big money mm -hmm. and I don't know. Along with medical expenses, you know, yeah. everything is on the rise for sure. Yeah. And look, we got robots for surgery. We've got all kinds of, you know, mm -hmm. really new um, and neat and good, very good um, procedures, which are being done. So it's kind of, it kind of priced the insurance and Medicare out of the world. So anyway. Well, I think we're out of time, aren't we, Brad? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you to our very special guest, Tricia Watts from Primetime Health Plan. If you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your healthcare provider. Thanks to Altman Health Systems and our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we we'll see you right here again next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you again, Tricia. We enjoyed Thank it you. very much. Thank you very much. Very Thank useful. You. Okay. Take care. You too.